One of the rarest accomplishments in Major League Baseball is a batter hitting four home runs in a single game. In the roughly 150 year history of the league, it's only happened 18 times, more rare than a perfect game. Obviously, one player in the lineup hitting four home runs will generate a lot of offense. Theoretically, they could all be solo home runs, but even just four RBIs from one player ought to drive up the score significantly and give the team a huge advantage to win. Normally, that is true, as out of the 18 games this has happened, all but three featured the player's team score at least 10 runs, and the average number of runs scored was nearly 14. Safe to say, if a player on your team hits four home runs, you can expect a big offensive day and a comfortable win. That is, with two exceptions. Despite featuring the greatest single game hitting performance, there have been two games where the team lost. The first game occurred in 1896, where future Hall of Famer Ed Delahanty of the Philadelphia Phillies hit four home runs in an 89 loss to the Chicago Cubs. The other game occurred on July 6th, 1986 in a game between the Atlanta Braves and Montreal Expos. To give a bit of context, this game meant almost nothing to the Expos. Yes, they were in second place in the National League East Division with a solid 43-34 and record entering that day, but they were also 11 and a half games out of first place. The New York Mets were running away with the division and would end up over 20 games in front of second by season's end. The Braves, on the other hand, were in the opposite scenario. They had a decent 41 and 39 record entering this game, being only two and a half games behind the San Francisco Giants in the Western Division. With the season at the halfway point, Atlanta needed every win they could get to remain competitive in a very close race. It's also important to point out that this was a period of time where the Braves were more or less the laughing stock of baseball. In a 26 season stretch from 1959 through 1985, Atlanta had just two playoff appearances and were swept in the first round both times. They were coming off a disastrous 1985 season where they nearly lost 100 games but looked decent so far here in 1986. Seeing how they have zero playoff wins over the past quarter century and have the opportunity to win the division, it certainly appears as if the Braves need to win now more than ever. The game started off conventionally. Zane Smith started for Atlanta and threw a scoreless top of the first while Montreal's Andy McGaffigan threw one of his own in the bomb half. After that, Smith continued cruising, throwing a 1-2-3 top of the second. In the bomb half, first baseman Bob Horner led out for Atlanta and I want to quickly discuss who this player is. Taking number one overall in the 1978 draft, Horner enjoyed a 10-year career in the big leagues from 1978 to 1988. A third baseman turned first baseman, he was one of the greatest sluggers during his generation. He hit at least 20 home runs 7 times and at least 30 home runs 3 times. At the end of his retirement, he ranked inside the top 20 for fewest at-bats per home runs, averaging a home run every 17.33 at-bats. As you can imagine, he promptly hit a home run here to give Atlanta a 1-0 lead. Also, just for fun, the full French broadcast of this game was available online, so here's what it's like to listen to the Expos radio in the mid-1980s. Horner's home run would be the only run given up by McGaffigan in this frame, and the score stood 1-0 entering the third, although it would not stay that way for long. With a runner on second and one out, left fielder Mitch Webster lined a double down the left field line to score Al Newman and tie the game at one. That would be the only run Montreal scored this inning, and the score would remain 1-1 entering the top of the fourth. In that inning, the Expos had a runner on first base with two outs when Mike Fitzgerald drilled the double into the left center field gap. Third baseman Tim Wallach came all the way around from first to score, and Montreal took the lead. On the very next pitch to Al Newman, he drove a two-run home run out to left field for his first homer of the season, and suddenly, the Expos jumped out to a 4-1 lead. Before I continue, there's something notable I want to point out. Al Newman had over 2,400 play appearances during his eight-year career, and this was his only home run. A man with a career adjusted OPS of 58 and a career slugging of 266 
comes through with a clutch hit against a team desperate for a victory. To give a bigger perspective of how unlikely this home run is, through the 2023 season, there have been 2,046 players to have at least 2,400 career plate appearances in the live ball era. Newman is tied for the fewest number of home runs and has the third lowest slugging percentage. Legitimately, one of the unlikeliest players to hit a home run in the past century, and he hit one in the worst possible time for the Atlanta Braves. Moving on, in the bottom of the fourth inning, with two outs and no one on base, Bob Horner stepped up to the plate again and blasted his second home run of the game. Another moonshot by the slugger to cut the lead in half to make it 4-2. But once again, that would be the only run the Braves could muster and it remained that score heading into the top of the fifth. The top half of the fifth inning would be where things went from bad to worse for the Braves. After a leadoff single from Mitch Webster, he attempted to steal second base, but Zane Smith threw the first in an attempted pickoff. What should have been an easy out turned into an error thanks to an errant throw by Bob Horner and Webster advanced the third. I think this play accurately sums up much of the Braves franchise for the 1980s. Montreal would immediately take advantage of the error as George Wright doubled in Webster to add another run in what has to be the only time I've ever seen someone double on a ground ball up the middle. Where Wright was on base wouldn't matter anyway as the next batter Andre Dawson hit an opposite field home run to score two more runs. Three batters to start the fifth inning and all three scored to have the Expos jump ahead 7-2. Following the home run, Hubie Brooks nearly went back to back with Dawson but settled for a long double, the third extra base hit in the past four batters. With Zane Smith imploding on the mound, manager Chuck Tanner had seen enough. He was taken out of the game and Jeff Dedman came in to relieve him. After Dedman struck out Tim Wallach, a pass ball by catcher Ozzy Virgil moved the runner to third base. To add injury to insult, the next pitch went wild and hit rookie Andres Galarraga on the helmet. Galarraga laid on the ground for several minutes and had to be taken out of the game. Unfortunately, this injury caused him to miss almost the entire rest of the season. Interestingly, Expos manager Buck Rogers is seen arguing with the umpires during this commotion, maybe as if he thought Deadman hit Galarraga on purpose. I couldn't find any information regarding this specific confrontation, so that's just an assumption. When the game resumed, Mike Fitzgerald came to bat and hit a high chopper to third where Ken Oberkfeld attempted a double play, but the Braves were only able to get one out, causing another run to score. After a single put runners on first and second, starring pitcher Andy McGaffigan hit the ball at first where Bob Horner definitely should have fielded that cleanly, but it hit off his glove and the wandering ball allowed the runner on second to come all the way around to score. It was ruled a hit, but honestly should have been ruled an error. Just to keep piling on, Mitch Webster, who started this inning with a single, hits his second one of this frame to drive in yet another Expos run. Six runs on seven hits in this fifth inning here broke the game wide open and Montreal now led 10-2. So much for trying to keep up in the division, the Braves gave away the game and were in major jeopardy of falling three and a half games back of first. Well, that's what makes this game interesting. In the bottom of the fifth, Atlanta clawed their way back into this. Back-to-back -back doubles to lead off the inning scored a run to make it 10-3. On the very next pitch following the RBI double, reliever Jeff Dedman attempted to sacrifice over the runner, and third baseman Tim Wallach nearly made a fantastic play, but first baseman Wayne Krenchicki, who replaced Andres Galarraga, couldn't hold on to the ball, and Dedman was safe on the error. Two batters later, Glenn Hubbard would come in to score on a single for the second run of the inning. Following a lineup by Dale Murphy, Bob Horner came to bat with two on and two outs. With his team down six runs on a full count pitch, Horner blasts his third home run of the game. The first three homer game of his career and suddenly a five run fifth inning brought life back to the Braves as they were now trailing 10 to seven. McGaffigan was chased out of the game and was replaced by Tim Burke who would finish the inning without allowing another run. Not relevant to the outcome of the game but in the top of the sixth, Hubie Brooks hit a ground ball up the middle and beat the throw to first, but was called out by the first base umpire. Replay show he was safe, and when Buck Rogers went out to argue, he was ejected from the game by Eric Gregg. Yes, that Eric Gregg. Anyway, 
With the game still 10-7 in favor of Montreal entering the 7th inning, Paul Ostenmacher took over on the mound for the Braves and on the third pitch he threw, gave up a home run to Mitch Webster. That was his 5th hit and 3rd RBI of the game and Montreal extended the lead to 11-7. The first and only 5 hit game in the career of Mitch Webster. In the bottom half, still down 4 runs, Bob Horner once again came to the plate with 2 outs and 1 on. One swing here was all he needed to bring the Braves right back into this and make history in the process. However, he would pop out instead. The score remained 11-7 heading into the bottom of the ninth and with two outs and nobody on base, Bob Horner was due to bat once again. Delivers. There's a fly ball deep left center field. Right looking up. He did it. It was just the 11th time in baseball history a player hit four home runs in a single game. One of the rarest, most monumental single game accomplishments anyone has ever achieved in the sport and Bob Horner cemented himself in that exclusive coveted group. Through 2023, Bob Horner is the only Brave to hit 4 home runs in one game and his 16 total bases are the second most in franchise history. Truly, one of the greatest offensive games by a player in Braves history and then they lost in the next at bat. Ken Griffey Sr. lined out following Horner, and the Expos won 11-8. Just the second time ever and first occurrence since the 1800s that a team lost despite featuring a player hit four home runs. Eight runs scored by Atlanta ties the record for fewest runs scored by a team to have a player hit four home runs. Just to add insult to injury, going back to Horner's 16 total bases, in the modern era of Major League Baseball, that is the all-time record for most total bases in a game by a player whose team lost. That's right, no player has matched this feat. 16 total bases in a game and to lose. It's also not as if the game was close. The final score may have only been 3 runs, but Montreal was in full control ever since the 5th inning. In case anyone was wondering, despite remaining neck and neck for the division up until this point, Atlanta would finish the season with the second worst record and come in last place in the National League West Division. Bob Horner had one of the greatest games not only in Braves franchise history, but in MLB history, and it was all for nothing thanks in part to a player's only career 5 hit game and another player's only career home run. It's the art of losing a 4 homer game.